Good afternoon. My name is Alexander Hagen. I'm the CEO of a small, medium-sized tech company in Silicon Valley. Uh, previously, I was a financial analyst, a financial journalist, a research engineer in telecommunications. And uh, today is November the 8th, and it is Election Day. And today, it is 99.999% likely that we will have to choose a group of people that uh, are surrounding Donald Trump and a group of people surrounding Hillary Clinton uh, to enter power in the executive branch of the United States government. Uh, because it's not only Clinton and Trump that we vote for, uh, but actually potentially thousands of people will fill into positions as a result of this decision of which of these two uh, groups you want to help bring to power or which of these two groups you most wish to not bring to power. Um, I have tried for a week to cogently summarize the pros and cons of the Clinton and Trump campaigns, uh, but it has uh, pushed me into depression. Um, and um, But I must make the case. <clears throat> it is my duty. Um, a friend of mine admonished me that if I did not ultimately lend my support to the Clinton coalition, uh, that if I did end up lending my support to the Clinton coalition, that I must send out an endorsement. And here it is, uh, two hours before, well, four hours before polls close in the East Coast, and I'm doing my best. Uh, what I, I can't give you an endorsement, but I can give you an analysis. Living on the West Coast most of my life, I have uh, I am now learning about the East Coast power structures uh, in a way that is deeper than I had the last couple of years in some respects. I'm far, far away physically from the street and the hill. Uh, I did not attend an Ivy League university. I have rubbed shoulders once in a while with a big wig or two. But what I have learned I am learning would be obvious to many insiders. What is power in America today? How is it measured? Uh, and for me, the email from uh, Michael Froman to, um, to John Podesta uh, showing uh, 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 Wall Street's recommendations of the Obama cabinet superficially through the WikiLeaks uh, uh, got me going down this uh, rabbit hole, figuring out who is in charge uh, in this particular case of bringing uh, into being the Obama administration. And um, uh, let's see here what I have for you. This was the cabinet uh, that was sent out by Michael Froman to um, John Podesta a month before the election. And these were the actual decisions made, the bold ones match. Uh, and uh, what I'll try to do is move this over a little bit um, so you can see what's going on here. Um, we have... Um, virtually an exact fit, really. Um, that's the superficial aspect. Oh, Wall Street fixed this. Robert Rubin fixed this. Um, but in fact, uh, the relationship uh, with Froman and Obama goes back to Harvard. Uh, Froman went on to work in the uh, first Obama administration, uh, first Clinton administration, then he went, followed Robert Rubin to Citigroup, uh, then uh, introduced Obama to Rubin in 2004, so it does indeed look like a Citigroup cabinet. But what it, uh, when you try to figure out, okay, who is Robert Rubin? Uh, Robert Rubin, uh, uh, you know, started at Goldman. Uh, Robert Rubin is clearly in touch with uh, uh, Larry Fink at BlackRock, who runs the most money of any uh, person in the world. Uh, has like 15, I don't know, five to 15 trillion in assets under management. Um, 
So these people are all very connected, and the common denominator superficially is the Bilderberg Group, the Trilateral Commission, and the Council on Foreign Relations. Most of the people that enter these offices serve on those bodies. And it's a complicated, revolving door. And this article right here, Grand Strategy Makers in the U.S. Presidency, is an absolutely excellent article indicating that we have this one elite uh, that has a, a conservative face and a liberal face. Um, uh, but they, they have, what they have in common is, for example, which economists are on the Council on Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, and the Bilderberg Group. Uh, most of them are extremely conservative, with the exception of Volcker. We have people like Neil Ferguson, um, extremely conservative, Thatcherites. Uh, so there aren't a lot of progressive voices, because uh, the CFR it was founded by the Rockefellers, funded by them, as was the Trilateral Commission. Um, and in the case of Bilderberg, uh, you know, you have uh, uh, large uh, corporate uh, CEOs, so they don't send the, uh, necessarily very many of the billionaires to these three organizations. It's generally their acolytes, their protégés, uh, and their spokespeople um, coming from the think tanks. So... Um, <clears throat> So that's what I found, these three organizations. And in fact, I believe this article shows the order of the organization association, CFR, Trilateral, Bilderberg, Grand, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what was most astonishing about um, the uh, Citigroup cabinet that was inserted um, or the discussions that Obama had with Froman that uh, made it appear like a city group cabinet, but actually they were all Obama's ideas. Uh, uh, we don't want to, uh, uh, we don't know all the details of how this cabinet was sent from Froman to Podesta. Uh, but what it did do was Obama allied with Wall Street for this great ripoff of the American people in 2008. Um, uh, he allied with them to avoid economic catastrophe. Um, he was not a reformer in the manner of a Roosevelt. His behavior showed conservatism and fear of uh, the an economy unraveling. And being the first African-American president um, in these times where the Fox News attack machine uh, is extremely potent, uh, obviously, uh, he was concerned on how many um, how many problems he could tackle simultaneously, and so he chose to rather than prosecute Wall Street, use them to rescue the economy by bringing in Clinton's old cabinet. But it also meant uh, massive amounts of uh, wealth transfer to Citigroup um, as a consequence. Um, perhaps he took the best path he could find. Um, after all. What do Robert Reich and Elizabeth Warren know about actually getting a capitalist economy firing on all cylinders? Uh, of course, I believe the next phase of economics, what futurists have tried to describe as a Star Trek economy, where personal accumulation is no longer the main motivator, uh, we do not see firing on all cylinders as necessarily the best way to create human happiness. So the whole concept of the economy has to be deconstructed because it's turned into a system of rents. Everywhere you see rents, and uh, uh, that is not actual production. And I'll try to explain briefly. If, for example, we had paid off $50,000 of everyone's mortgage debt in the United States in 2008, um, we could have achieved probably the same result in stabilizing the financial system. Um, but instead, what we did is we lowered the interest rate on money to 1% to allow the banks to accumulate uh, to, to uh, vastly accelerate uh, inequality. This was a price we had to pay to get the banks solvent again, was to basically give them free capital. So it was almost impossible for them to screw up. How do you, can you screw up? You have unlimited free money that you can lend out. So, you know, in a sense, I skipped to the conclusion, which is that we have one ruling class in the United States. They wield political and economic power. 
and they split on cultural ideas, industries, nuance. Trump will bring in a Goldman banker to run Treasury, just as Obama did. Uh, this Goldman banker is also his campaign chair. And let's see if I've got his uh, info for you. I think I have to type in Trump versus Clinton. Trump. So, um, some of the things to look at if you're choosing between Trump and Clinton, uh, they're both bad on the Fourth Amendment. Um, Trump is bad on the, uh, I mean, uh, I have some concerns about Trump on the First Amendment with this sort of, uh, uh, but this issue about uh, Trump's violence uh, has been deconstructed as we now know that Clinton operators are actually paying people to start violence at Trump rallies. So I have some sympathy for them there. Uh, Trump has aligned himself with James Woolsey, who was Clinton's original um, intelligence man uh, when he uh, came into power uh, uh, with Snowden. They both were uh, bad about acknowledging that he had provided some good to the country. Uh, on the environment, of course, Trump is uh, terrible, uh, and Clinton may be good. Um, so um, this fellow for Treasury is Steve uh, Mnuchin, um, and he's currently his campaign manager. <clears throat> um, Clinton may bring in Sheryl Sandberg from Facebook to be the Treasury Secretary, which is a bit of a wild card. Um, Trump's choice for military czar, General uh, Flynn, is a really interesting guy. Uh, or maybe it's he's a lieutenant colonel. I think he's a general. Yeah, uh, a lieutenant general, Flynn, I think. Um, and um, he certainly is open-minded. You can see his interviews on Al, uh, Al Jazeera, on RT, on, uh, on the mainstream media, on Fox. Um, and thus far, I prefer him to Michelle Flournoy, Flournoy and the uh, neoliberal humanitarian interventionists uh, that are pushing uh, extremely hawkish foreign policy. But you can just see it from these groups. You have a lot of Kissinger influence, um, uh, which is a, a realpolitik that involves the deaths and suffering of millions of people. Um, Trump and holding out for the promise of cooperation with Russia creates a very complex situation. It means that a man ostensibly running as a conservative will be in a position to view the world from a very multipolar lens because Russia is indeed at the present time the guarantor of liberty for nations which do not necessarily want to fall in line with the Western neoliberal uh, uh, corporate world order, um, such as Syria. So it appears we are in for more conflict with Clinton and a total disrespect of the environment with Trump. With Clinton, we have lip service to criminal justice reform. With Trump, we have support the police, yet with a promise to revitalize inner cities. With Trump, voter suppression has not been properly addressed when he's talked about the rigged system. If Trump has a champion in particular, the white working class, making 10 million immigrant citizens will dilute the um, race-based politics of a uh, movement largely rooted in the white working class. Um, so this is the real reason that Republicans are up in arms about immigrants is that they believe that their subculture will lose power. And they would like to be the dominant culture. Um, they would champion immigration reform if they thought it would bring them more voters um, on trade, Trump has said he would reindustrialize America much more clearly than Clinton has. They both champion trillion dollar reinvestment plans. Um, Trump's, oddly enough, would be private partnerships. Um, and this is one area where if Trump becomes president, it would be interesting to see whether as a uh, uh, entrepreneur, he could bring cost savings to the hundreds of billions of dollars or even trillions of dollars of waste that are going on now. He might achieve nothing. It might be effective. It's unlikely we'll find out because the, the vast majority of the media and the corporations are on Clinton's side. 
but it's possible. But who will have leverage on either of these two candidates is the question. Um, Clinton has adopted uh, much of the Bernie Sanders platform, so it seems domestically the Bernie Sanders movement may indeed have a chance to advance some of its agenda, but will depend on what Clinton makes her priorities, because uh, there's going to be a tendency for her to take the liberal and progressive wing of her party for granted, and she's going to have to cut her deals in the center, uh, getting uh, conservative Democrats to agree with her, then liberal Republicans, uh, two that are left or whatnot. Um, Trump has called for draining the swamp, but he should have approached it from a bipartisan perspective. Nonetheless, it would seem he would put some efforts into this in his presidency, so he's talked about term limits. He's talked to, now the question is, without uh, electoral reform, uh, you have a millionaire class. It's a fixed thing. They can br pull out millions and billions every election cycle. Now, for non-millionaires, the, the, they have a, a form of currency in, as well, and that is uh, their brand. So if, the, if the, uh, the problem with term limits is it's going to affect people who don't have access to big donor networks uh, more than... Um, but of course, once you're in office, you should have access to it. But essentially, it punishes those without money more. Um, because uh, uh, if you do survive getting into office as a, a person who isn't affiliated with the uh, moneyed groups, uh, the only you know the only chance you have is your name recognition and your your record. So uh, so it is it, it's stacked against people that don't have access to a lot of money, unfortunately. Although term limits is probably a good idea, but it isn't in a broken system if it. Uh, accelerates our rule by uh, the uh, billionaire class. The good, uh, Clinton, uh, the environment, the uh, potential leverage of the progressive wing, criminal justice reform, uh, these are goodnesses. Um, with Trump, his uh, policies on trade, on anti-corruption legislation, a deal to bring in Russia from the cold, if Flint's Flynn survives as chief foreign policy or national security advisor for Trump. The bad. Clinton's got a history in foreign policy of being ultra-interventionist. Um, she has uh, broke the record, along with Obama, of course, on arms sales to Middle Eastern dictatorships, Saudi Arabia and the Gulf states. This is complicated because it has to do with creating counterweight to Iran that they brought in from the cold, which I personally approve of. Um, I know a lot of Persian people, and uh, uh, Iran uh, is one of the least dysfunctional countries in the Middle East right now. They have uh, elections that are uh, that that are not fully free and fair, but um, they are uh, considered um, possibly the most functional elections occurring in the Middle East in the sense that in Israel, uh, the Palestinians who are not Israeli citizens are not allowed to vote. So I don't consider that better than a system where you have to approve the candidates, which is what they have in uh, Iran. So uh, she's been ultra aggressive in foreign policy, terrible what she's done to Libya and talking about supporting uh, children and women. Uh, that's great, uh, families. Uh, but it hasn't happened in Libya or Syria. Uh, she's surrounded by extreme hawks such as Kissinger. Um, she's hawkish on the surveillance state. Much of her tenure as senator and secretary of state supported the oligarchy in many respects. Too cozy with Wall Street. In Trump's case, uh, bad. Uh, he supports the surveillance state as far as we can tell. Uh, terrible potential problems with uh, pollution. So we die from the environment with Trump and from war with Clinton is the fear, the anxiety one has. There's the prospect of the Supreme Court uh, having uh, uh, people on it that will remove our liberties. Uh, uh, from my perspective, uh, uh, you know, I haven't gotten a, a comfort around things like Citizens United, <clears throat> which I consider a removal of my liberty. Uh, he's a, he, his supply-side economics has problems. Um, 
And in his life, he hasn't spent enough time developing his political and economic, uh, macroeconomic awareness, uh, certainly his political awareness, uh, too cozy with big business. He, was, he wanted to bring in Carl Icahn, great. I mean, and then you've got, uh, you know, uh, the two daughters, uh, Ivanka and Chelsea, friends. Uh, both married investment banker types from Wall Street, one a real estate developer in New York, the other a Goldman Sachs investment banker. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, which elite? Uh, so this year really proved how broken our system is. The day after this election, we need to go to work really fundamentally rethinking our political system. Um, whether dealing with issues like ranked choice voting, proportional representation, uh, uh, neither conservatives uh, nor progressives are happy with the uh, current system. Um, we should offer the position of presidency to the wisest and most virtuous amongst us. Uh, and if you read Aristotle's Politics, there's an interesting section. Rather than having people running for office where you get egomaniacs, uh, sometimes uh, sociopath or psychopathic egomaniacs, both Trump and Clinton uh, have shades of that. Um, we, why don't we decide who we want to have be our president and then uh, tell them that they're going to have the job? In other words, do a job search. Uh, uh, so... Uh, do we really want people to run for office rather than uh, the people finding the right candidates? It's, it's, a, uh, it's an idea because this the current system isn't working. There are many thousands of ways of solving this. Tomorrow we can start this reform. Today I should be happy, I suppose, that the progressive movement will have a strong voice in the Clinton administration, but I am deeply uneasy uh, because of... Uh, the past, because of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, because of the Board of Directorship on Walmart, because of the Wall Street speeches, because of the Clinton Foundation's big donations from uh, these uh, right-wing dictatorships in the Middle East, uh, that we then sold a hundred billion dollars worth of weapons to uh, uh, reasons for hope. If she actually does what she uh, says, for example, in the third debate, uh, you know, we would be in great shape. But that's not how it works out. It doesn't work out that the rhetoric is then matched with the policies. Um, and then, so, uh, the rhetoric doesn't match the policies with very many presidents. And, of course, some of them evolved, too, uh, like Reagan ended up <clears throat> evolving in some ways uh, when he befriended the Gorbachevs. I cannot endorse either of these two candidates. What I can say is there are many people I know in the Bernie Sanders movement who expect to have a functional government and potential for real change on a fraught road in conjunction with Hillary Clinton. Uh, who do we have as shining lights uh, for Mr. Trump? Uh, at this point, uh, the only person in this contingent that I can relate to is General Flynn, and I consider Mike Pence and Tim Kaine both more dangerous than Trump or Clinton. Um, so study their policies. You have a couple of hours left. Um, I've given you what analysis I can. My name is Alexander Hagan. Good day and good luck.